Welcome back to America's Retirement Headquarters, home of the Retirement Guys Formula and America's Medicare Associates with Nolan Baker and Chaz Price. The phone number 419-794-3030. The website arhq.com. Do you hate to fill out the paperwork in your physician's waiting room? So does comedian Nate Bargatze. I like my doctor. The one thing that drives me crazy, every time I go, I have to fill the same form out. And I'm like, what are y'all doing with this form? (laughs) They always ask what your family medical history is. Well, where am I finding that out? (laughs) You think I'm just at home at Christmas? I'm like, all right, who's got diabetes? (laughs) Come on now, got a physical coming up. (laughs) How many heart attacks we got in the room? Now, family history is just one factor when it comes to calculating longevity risk, which is an interesting concept in and of itself. Let's talk about what that is, how you calculate it, and why it's so important. Well, I think Nate was spot on. That was pretty comical there. And I, <laughs> and I could certainly relate to him when going to the physician's office and had to fill that information out. You know, when you look at longevity risk, it really is the biggest risk and the biggest fear for a retiree. And that, quite frankly, means outliving your income. And so if that's a worry that you have, I think the number one thing to do is stress test your portfolio against longevity risk. Um, You know, when we look at it, there's a lot of risk in retirement, right? So there's the risk of what if the market collapses, the risk of what if tax rates double, uh, the risk of having a health care crisis, the risk of Social Security failing. And longevity risk is one more of those risks that are out there. Chaz, one of the things that I see you do a lot in the meetings is you'll stress test people's portfolios and it'll show the probability of success. So it's running, you know, a couple thousand different scenarios looking at those areas. And one of those tabs is longevity risk. And what it'll do is it'll show, you know, what the probability of success is if somebody lives instead of the age 90 to 95 or 100. And when you see a big drop in that number, the the good thing is, is there's things that people can do about it. So once you know what the risks are that you're facing, and longevity risk is one of those risks that you face, uh, there are then certain type of investments that can help with offsetting that. Uh, There's ways that you can reduce that longevity risk. You know, things like maybe not taking Social Security early. You know, I hear a lot of people say, well, nobody in my family lived past the mid-70s, so I better get it while I can. Well, the reality is, is what if you do live past your mid-70s? What if mm-hmm. you live to you know, your mid-80s? So when we're looking at Social Security advice, I'm typically betting on you living a long time. I'm looking at making sure that you get uh, what I hope to be the most amount of lifetime income. You know, It could be things like choosing the correct pension option, uh, living off your interest income and avoid spending the principal, and then, you know, you could also supplement it with annuity income and having and reposition a portion of your risky assets into something that provides more predictability are all different types of things that when we're looking at calculating longevity risk, uh, the things that are important to me uh, when I do the analysis. Yeah, I agree. The, the stress test, I love doing that because it provides a client with um, a measure of um, peace of mind, knowing that they have financial security in the event that they, you know, live five to 10 years longer. And by planning for a longer lifespan, you know, what we're ultimately trying to do is we're, we're just, you know, ultimately reducing the risk of running out of money, which like you said, that's one of the major concerns, probably the, the number one concern that most every, um, every person, every potential retiree has, you know, there's a couple other considerations for long-term care or for uh, longevity risk planning as well. One being planning for long-term care. So, you know, the longer you live, the higher the possibility of needing some long-term care services, such as, you know, assisted living or nursing homes or in-home care. So that's something that we need to build into your plan as a, as a potential cash flow and, you know, again, the longer you live, the higher the chances that you might even need something with a more, uh, you know, chronic illness, a daily activities uh, of living um, sort of care where maybe it's just you have somebody come into the home. Uh, it doesn't always necessarily have to be a full on nursing home stay. But some of these chronic issues can actually be more expensive in some cases because they're just longer in duration versus a, a, a critical illness um, where you're in a nursing facility for a period of time and then, God forbid, you pass away. 
So those are some considerations. Also, legacy planning. So when you're considering you living longer, that may mean less money for your beneficiaries. So we help our clients to determine what that actually means. Um, should we look at you know, some other sort of investment option where we can provide uh, some benefit your, your children or your beneficiaries, uh, churches, charities, some of the, the causes that you're passionate about? Does that matter to you? Or, you know, we've had clients in the past to say, I hope my last check bounces. You know, I, I don't have any legacy goals or maybe you don't have any children. So those are that that is also a consideration when you're looking at long longevity risk is what is the implications of health care, long term care needs living well into my 80s, 90s, maybe even in, to 100. What does that do to my legacy plan? Um, am I going to have money available for bequests, uh, charitable giving? Do we, look, do we need to look at setting up trusts or maybe irrevocable trusts and things like that with the help of an attorney? Um, and then just in general, like you said, the bigger one, I think, is lifestyle consideration. So longevity planning, when we do that stress test analysis, it allows us to consider the type of lifestyle that you desire and the one that's probable, I guess, in certain circumstances. So uh, generally, generally, we'll design a financial plan which is the way that you describe how you things want how you want things to happen, but sometimes things don't go the way you want them to happen, and so we can test that scenario, the potential of that happening, and then see what would be required in order for you to have still a comfortable retirement, to be able to engage in the activities that you want to, to a certain extent, maintain a certain standard of living, but still make sure that you understand the risk of longevity and that you've estimated the financial consequences. Of uh, and the support that you would you would likely need in that sort of situation. Yeah. So again, looking at the longevity risk, and it is important. It's something you know we want to take into consideration with your plan. And the number one thing that we can do is if your fear or concern is. Uh, worrying about outliving your income, let us stress test your plan. Let us uh, punch those numbers in there, and we can find out how longevity risk might impact uh, the outcome of your plan. And then from there, what we can do is uh, provide some advice and guidance on how to try to reduce and or eliminate that risk for you. I don't know when it happened, but at some point, the fear of death got uh, replaced by the, the, honestly, it's the fear of life, the fear of living too long and not having the the means to do it. And, and that is a valid concern because as we talked about countless times throughout the show, life can be expensive. So you want to make sure that you can uh, cover that and still maintain the same sort of lifestyle. If you have a plan in place, you can tackle this. You can take on and address the uh, the longevity risk and hopefully uh, lay those concerns to bed. The best way to start, honestly, a phone call to the team at America's Retirement Headquarters, 419-794-3030. Suppose it doesn't have to be a phone call if you prefer you can also go to the website, arhq.com. 